Hello everyone, and in today's video we're going to be talking about why Total War Pharaoh might succeed. Now, first I want to talk about how I called Total War Pharaoh. Of course, the last video I made was about how, um, in, a, in a video I made several months ago following the release of a Total War Troy a saga, um, that the natural next step for historical total war was creating a Bronze Age total war. And uh, the example I used was the successful mod for the original Rome total war, um, which was called aptly a uh, Bronze Age total war. Now, uh, just again, how I called it, Troy is set in a sort of, you know, legendary to semi-legendary uh, setting, but in a historical sort of milieu, right? So it's set in the Bronze Age, but the story, the particular stories that it follows are legendary to semi-legendary, of course. Now, um, the natural progression from that was to make a full-blown historical total war. Now, something I addressed in that video was the branding issue. So a lot of people said, oh, that game is not going to be successful because the Bronze Age is not marketable. Bronze Age is marketable. The ancient Near East is definitely marketable for the masses, and as I said in that video, there were a few different avenues they could take. The first avenue, which was, uh, you know, the avenue I thought they might take was sort of making it uh, rather uh, emphasizing that biblical connection, right? So utilizing uh, some sort of name that's recognizable from uh, the Bible. So I thought perhaps uh, Neo-Assyrian route could have been taken like a King Sennacherib time period, uh, Neo-Assyrian Empire time period. I thought, um, uh, I thought the Bronze Age collapse would have been good as well because there would have been many recognizable names. Of course, Egypt, uh, Assyria, Babylon, uh, the Hittites. However, you know the route they went with was essentially the route I recommended which with that uh, biblical connection so of course they went with Pharaoh of course something definitely recognizable for the masses through its biblical connection of course uh, now but by choosing the name Pharaoh I feel like Creative Assembly might have pigeonholed themselves just the tiniest bit because, of course, when you call the game Pharaoh, then, of course, this sort of emphasizes the Egyptian nature of the campaign, even though the campaign map, as we have seen in the previews, actually is far beyond Egypt. It includes um, Asia Minor. It includes the Levant uh, and, of course, a significant part of the Mediterranean Sea. And, of course, I don't think we've seen the whole map as it is at the moment, but and of course things are still in progress because uh, we're still quite a ways away from the release date. I mean there is still time for some uh, minor changes. But in any case, uh, by calling it Total War Pharaoh, like I said, Creative Assembly might have pigeonholed themselves, but I feel like, you know, this game, in order to really succeed, in order to really feel like it's not a regional game, it's not a saga game because of course it's it's a full historical total war it's not a saga game it's a full historical total war the pricing scheme is also um the uh, regular historical total war pricing now what they need to do in my opinion is sort of have a roadmap for expansions for this game uh, whether you call it dlc campaign or whatever uh, or faction dlcs I don't know. But, you know, in my previous video I touched upon, you know, what they could do uh, with faction DLCs having Mesopotamia, a Mesopotamian pack, um, an Iranian pack, who knows. But what they definitely need to do is expand the era campaigns. Now, something they might have to drift away from here is calling uh, factions by the name of the faction leader. So I kind of understand why they went this route because they want to emphasize the sort of um, Bronze Age collapse, uh, sort of political crises that engulfed the various states of the ancient Near East during the Bronze Age collapse in the 12th 
century BC, 12th to 11th centuries. So by going with a faction leader as a faction in and of itself, you kind of emphasize this um, political free-for-all. Now, th that's all well and good. Um, I think it can be done well. They just have to be very careful um, that it doesn't feel like a legendary lord situation, something that really turned me off of Troy, even though I did enjoy the game for a while, was this sort of legendary lord thing, this one-man heroes type situation. This is something that I don't find enjoyable. Uh, many people, I think, agree with me on that. They just don't find it enjoyable. That's why I find Warhammer to be a nice cure for insomnia. Uh, but in any case, uh, no offense to any Warhammer fans, it's just not my thing. Uh, however, this game, Total War Pharaoh, needs to broaden its horizons. It needs expansions. It needs a roadmap. So it needs era campaigns, essentially. So something that could be easy, easily marketable would be something like a Hammurabi campaign uh, set in the early 2nd millennium BC, where you could, uh, again, you could play as Egypt, you could play as Mari, uh, the old Assyrian kingdom, the Babylonian kingdom of Hammurabi, the Elamites, of course. You can have a sort of Iranian-themed expansion, again, sort of connecting it to the biblical theme, where you could have a Cyrus the Great campaign, Rise of Persia. Of course, there is the mod Rise of Persia for Rome too. There's Rise of Persia for um, uh, the original Rome Total War. Great, great mods, great campaigns. Um, now... A Cyrus the Great campaign would be quite marketable. Uh, Darius as well, I think, a sort of Iranian-themed campaign is sort of a dark horse opportunity here. Uh, you can even have Cambyses' conquest of Egypt it's kind of introduce the Iranians, connect it to the sort of Total War Pharaoh theme. You could, of course, have Cyrus conquer Egypt and make him the Pharaoh. And, of course, um, the Mesopotamian theme is something that is dear to me as Gudea. Uh, and something that I would like to see very much so is a Rise of Sargon campaign. So like a Sumerian city-state free-for-all with Lugal Zagesi, Sargon of Akkad, and Shakushana, and other Mesopotamian um, famous kings. And that's something that I think could be marketable in, in some way and would have unique unit designs. I mean... I, I don't think there has been any mod, any Total War campaign that has touched that era. And even though you would be kind of limited in your military technology and unit sizes, perhaps, it would be really unique and interesting to see in the Total War library if we could have a Rise of Sargon campaign in as a sort of expansion for Total War Pharaoh. So anyway, to break down what I said in this video, I think... You know, Total War Pharaoh, natural progression for historical Total War, the natural next step to have an ancient Near East Total War, a focus on the ancient Near East. And the Pharaoh branding, I think, is a good idea. Uh, now, what the game needs to do, it needs a roadmap, it needs geographical expansion, it needs eras, era campaigns, something like Rome 2 got, not necessarily to that degree, though it would be nice if it did get that. So if we could have era campaigns like a Mesopotamian-themed Rise of Sargon, Rise of Hammurabi, or the sort of Neo-Assyrian Empire theme, uh, the campaigns of Sennacherib and the other Neo-Assyrian kings, or even a Neo-Babylonian campaign with Nebuchadnezzar II. And then, of course, lastly, the sort of dark horse that I don't think anyone has suggested. Cyrus the Great campaign, Rise of Persia. I think that's something that could be marketable and it could be connected to Total War Pharaoh by, of course, having your Persian king become the pharaoh once they conquer Egypt, as Cambyses II did historically. Now, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say in this video. If you enjoy content about the historical Total Wars and their mods, Consider subscribing to the channel, consider liking this video, consider tapping the bell button, and I'll see you in the next one, hopefully sooner rather than later.